Morning everyone. You join us in rather glamorous surroundings with the mighty Bentley. <laughs> we're, we're going on a road trip. We're going on a road trip. Um, sort of a celebrating the end of the Turbo R project. She's actually in decent fettle yeah, now. Yeah, she's actually, running well. It works and everything. 260 miles back from Leeds, nothing broke, which is a good sign with an old Bentley. We're not the only ones that have brought an awesome car on this. There's a lot no. of people, a lot of cars. This Should we yeah. just walk along and have this, a look? This is the Petrol Heads Tour 2021. So let's see what we've got. So obviously the first car we've got is our very own Bentley Turbo R, fresh from a refresh. Is that a sentence? I think it is. Triumph TR6, <coughs> TVI Camaro. This is absolutely fantastic. A Saab Sonic. When was the last time you saw one? Have you ever seen one? This particular one's painted Ferrari yellow. It belongs to our boss, Steve. You can see over there, that's yeah. his. Jaguar XKR. It's not Phil, but <laughs> Phil will probably like it. There's a BMW M4 in there as well. It's not a classic. <laughs> He's right, it's not. <laughs> TVR V8S. BMW Z3 with a schnitzer kit. <laughs> We like that, that's class. That's a bit of Jeff right there, Capri. Sub 9-3. And to finish off, well. Wow. Oh, we're being called to action, let's go. let's go. I took the wheel for the first leg while Jeff read through the penalties that we could incur over the weekend's point scoring competition. Points will be deducted for the following. The first car to stop for petrol. Oh, we are so losing that. <laughs> we do have an enormous fuel tank. We do have an enormous fuel tank. It takes 100 quid. If you fill up at the same carriage as the first car to stop, you have two points deducted. Who's keeping tab of this? If you lift your bonnet or engine cover, one point deducted. First to stop for a wee, one point deducted. I'm going to lose that, definitely. No, I'm just going to pee myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's leather, it's fine, it won't clean. Whoa! Sounds amazing. Oh, it sounds great. <laughs> After the exuberant exits from the Capri and the Sonnet, I couldn't resist following suit. Very boring. Whoa! <laughs> did we break loose there? I think we did. <laughs> And how are you enjoying the uh, the drive, Joe? Well, the Bentley's going well. She hasn't broken yet. Um, we've only lost the convoy once in about five miles, so... Yeah, it bodes well for the future, doesn't it? I'm calling that a win. Yeah. And that, that Sonnet is uber cool. Yeah, it really is. You can't see it because there's a 9.3 in the way. But that's pretty cool as well. Yeah. It's uh, also Saab and yellowy. We like yellow convertibles on this uh, channel, don't we, Jeff? We do. Especially ones with broken engines. Shut up! <laughs> we rolled through Kent, stopping only occasionally to admire the views. Bumpy roads take me home to the place. Ah, but long. West Sussex. Yeah, I think it's more Surrey. Progress was good, and after creating quite a scene in the pub car park, we enjoyed a lunch befitting of Bentley drivers such as ourselves. We dipped the oil, which attracted quite a lot of attention, and then made a quick fix. So just before we set up after lunch, we've had one slight issue. Our wheel cap for the nuts has been rattling a wee bit. We really need gaffer tape. We do need gaffer, but we've got the next best thing. Jeff has been given some insulation tape. Mullen and approved repair method. Look at that, sporty. We yeah. are a pair of classy gentlemen with yeah. gaffer tape on the Bentley. Let's hit the road. I'm not going to do quite the same. Exuberant manoeuvre. Exuberance. So, Jeff's first drive in the Bentley. My first drive in a Bentley, in fact. Not a, just, but you've never not, driven a Bentley ever? Not just this Bentley. Oh, she wafts along, doesn't she? <laughs> she wafts along. She goes all right. Uh, oh, it's the switch nearest you. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Very confusing array of switches. She's all bonnet. Hmm. And boot. And middle. <laughs> what does that mean? I was going to go anyway, but that nice gentleman flashed me because Presumably because I'm driving a Bentley. Well, that just means you're better. Oh, I like to think so. Oh, 
that was perfect. There was a kid there, could have been no more than about eight or nine, just looked and went, there's a Bentley. There's a Bentley. Still gets looks even now, even from young people. He probably thinks I'm an affluent chap. Well, you are. You're Lord Ruggles of the Manor Squire. Uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> right, you know, you know I doubted you ever so slightly when you said, I'm starting to fall in love with this thing. It doesn't take long, does it? It's, it's so endearing, isn't it? It's... <laughs> <laughs> One of the chaps on the, um, on the trip, he was saying that when he got to a certain age, he had the choice between one of these Bentley Turbo R's and a house. I think seeing this today, he regrets going for the house. Although the house would probably do more to the gallants. Oh, oh it gets along well. Oh, it does. Considering you're hauling, as you uh, so eloquently put earlier, two and a half tons of girders and leather to get along, you know. <laughs> it's so endearing. Isn't it? It's so endearing. I absolutely love it. I mean, like I've said before, I, I didn't get it. It's phenomenal. It really is. No. Colour me converted. Absolutely. As long as we're not paying the fuel bill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it doesn't really fit in a parking space, but Jeff and I have absolutely fallen in love with the Bentley today. That thing has properly endeared itself. So on that note, Time for a drink, and we'll see you in the morning. The next morning, we left Bedford with a challenge to get various photographs on the way to our next stop in Castle Donington, as well as a photo of our car next to a police car and next to a lake with us also in the photo, both of which we literally managed in the hotel car park. We also needed a photo on a driving road, one of a stranger over 18 sat in our car, one with a car the same make as ours, particularly tricky for those of us in Bentleys and TVRs, and one with a classic car the latter of which turned out to be surprisingly easy. There's a oh, there we yes. go! Yes, quick, 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 <laughs> quick, 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 quick. Yes, look at the size <laughs> difference, this is hilarious. Winning. We've done that, I think we are gonna win this. With that stroke of luck, we ticked another task off the list and headed for Castle Donington. We had an address, but only a basic map, and we had to arrive there before midday and without using sat-navs or motorways. So it was just as well we had Turbo R power. Straight on? Yeah. Cool. A6. Just keep following the A6. There's a C-class. You're so. a funny, funny man, I mean, funny man. It took me a while to get that. Confident we were ahead of time, we left the beaten track and found a winding country road for some photos. With Jeff on the camera, I went for it. While I was turning around, a local appeared to ask Jeff why there was a car tearing up and down the road. Jeff thought on his feet, asked the guy if he fancied sitting in a Bentley, and before we knew it, we had another photo ticked off the list. Can you do me a favour? What's that? You sit in it, put your sunnies on. we are just got to have a stranger sit in the car. This gentleman's going to sit behind the wheel for us. I'll see if you think it, Jeff. Brilliant. I really appreciate it, Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Nicely done, though. Jeff's quick thinking meant we were doing well, and as we got closer to the finish line, it seemed that our luck wasn't done yet. We haven't found a Bentley, but there's a Silver Spirit. It's close enough. Silver Spirit and Turbo R are about as close as you're going to get. Yeah, I think so. Let's go. We've got to get to the finish line. Go, go, go. Yeah. You can see up there, we have Clapgun arrived. Street. On Clapgun Street. So this is our final destination in Castle Donington. We've arrived on time, squeezed the Bentley through these posts, which was quite incredible considering uh, we nearly hit this, uh, this bad boy. We did. We're not staying in the EV spaces, by the way. We're just in here very briefly. We're very briefly because there is, uh, unfortunately, nowhere else to park. We were third here, weren't we? 
Yes, we were third. Let's see who's got the best pictures. We'll have to see who's met the tasks properly and who hasn't. The old girl's done well. She yes. has. Team Bentley. With everyone back together, the convoy to lunch was biggest engine first. So our 6.75 litre Bentley led the way. So it's just after lunch. We're not driving the Bentley after this because John here, chap who's organised it all, you having a spin in the Bentley, John? Yeah, I am. Looking forward to it. Enjoy. Take it easy and uh, yeah, be kind Enjoy to the old the girl. Enjoy the TBR. Have fun. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so this is quite a nice uh, way to spend your afternoon after lunch. Yeah, this is a, a bit of a culture change, isn't it? Uh, from Bentley Turbo R to TBR V8S. Oh. <laughs> you know, I said I really love the Bentley. I might really love this, and I've driven it for about 14 yards. It's just comical. Let it rip. <laughs> this thing's incredible. Oh, bit of scuttle shake. <laughs> it's not as comfy as the Bentley. She might bite me. I don't know if it will actually. I think it's too dry for that. It feels fairly planted. It's just the shove of the thing. The, yeah. the thing is with the Bentley, like we've said before, the power of that is more of a surge. You're not snapping your neck in the seat. It's just a gentle push. Quite a heavy clutch as you would expect of a yeah. Of a V8. But that's the point of a TVR, it's not meant to be delicate and gentle. No, exactly. Manhandle it a bit. Exactly. Oh! 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 Yes! Rather conveniently, we're at a traffic light. Well, fair play to John for letting us have a go in this. John, thank you very much. Yes, thank you, John. And uh, when you want it back, no. Because <laughs> this is basically what I'm thinking. Besotted with the TVR, we rumbled towards Matlock. But after refuelling and reluctantly giving John his keys back, we had another car to sample. So the eclectic mix of vehicles on this Petrol Heads Tour 2021 continues with a Saab Sonnet. A Saab Sonnet 3, no less. This belongs to our boss Steve, who's taken the keys to our Bentley Turbo R and said, there you go, boys, knock yourselves out. And what he's left us with is a left-hand drive car by far and away the least powerful of the convoy with, what, 70 horsepower? 65 brake horsepower, 65 horsepower. Ford V4 engine, because this is a Sonnet 3. Which does sound... <laughs> Glorious. Sounds excellent. So what we basically have is a little glass fibre coupe, two-seater with a glass rear hatch and very, very yellow. The paint is incredible. And the other thing is we've got a slightly slippy clutch. Um, and when I say slightly slippy, I mean it's... Uh, oh! So that's big revs, but not a lot of progress, isn't no. it? No. It sounds like it's going a million miles an hour, which makes it very exciting. So we're now on our way up to the famous cat and fiddle hopefully we won't encounter too many steep hills otherwise I that, that so. clutch might suffer a bit more but uh, well it's not very heavy so if you do have to get out and push gear change all joking aside the gear change itself is really nice it's really snicky and direct i think this car is going to be a lot of fun yep that is one beautiful looking Saab Sonnet, but the, uh, not not going anywhere on the grass verge so the clutch started slipping uh yesterday apparently and uh we took over it was at the point it would do 50 or 55 if you pushed it, then it went down to about 40 and then 35 and then we had some hills and then 20 miles an hour on what you might be able to tell is an incline became difficult to the point where it then conked out there and we had to push it up onto this verge. Long story short, 
It's not gone well. Still, at least we were getting plenty of pictures of the others having fun in our Bentley. But just four hours later, we got a tow to safer ground, and the stricken Saab was loaded onto a flatbed. The truck drove us and the Sonnet to that night's hotel, where we were only too happy to give Steve his keys back. The next morning we were back in the Bentley, and had a slightly less frantic day ahead. Make our own route from Ambergate to our hotel in Evesham, with additional points awarded for every pub with a royal name that we photographed our car next to along the way. We got cracking with that one straight away, and as you can see, just in the nick of time. Bonus points were also on offer for every extra car, the same make as ours, that we managed to photograph along the way. So cameras in hand, we hit the road. We pulled over in the pretty town of Bakewell for snacks, and by pure chance spotted a Bentley Anage. After frantically chasing it and grabbing a picture, we continued to head south, and soon found ourselves at a recently established landmark. So we've just arrived at the recently opened Great British Car Journey, and a Silver Spirit. Not another Bentley Turbo R, but it's close enough. That's about as close as we're going to get anyway. Nice one, Jeff. After photographing it in such a way that you couldn't quite see the Rolls Royce badge, we met up with a couple of the TVRs. One of the TVRs has got a slight issue. The exhaust was extremely low from behind, and it turns out it has actually hit the ground, pretty much. It's like every time you go over a bump, isn't it? No, it's no, it's normal road driving, it bounces and just catches the floor. Catches the ground. That ain't right. You're actually tying up your exhaust with an old phone cable. Yeah, it's, not, it's not old cable, it's fairly new. Well, that's all right then. Tiny little bow. Were you in the Bowie Scouts? Do you know how to do a, a <laughs> double, triple, quadruple, flippy knot? <laughs> about 10 years ago I was. There you go, you uh, see. It's, uh, it's been a while. Training well spent. <laughs> After lunch we continued on our way, and with everyone back together just half an hour from the finish line, including Steve who'd swapped to his Saab 9.3 at this stage, Jeff took the wheel for the final leg and we headed for the hotel. That night, with everyone dressed for dinner, the points were tallied up to see who'd won. And as awards were given out, it was down to just us and Team Z3. Second place. Oh. Oh. oh, steady on. Oh, was the Z3? Yes. Thank you very First much. place. Yeah, well deserved. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. We clinched it. But as much as Jeff and I had won the competition, there was a bigger win here. We'd bought a Bentley, sight unseen off the internet during a lockdown, done much of the repair to it ourselves and driven it over 400 miles through busy towns, down country lanes and tearing around B roads. And it had been faultless. Not only had nothing broken, but we'd fallen in love with the Turbo R. This old dinosaur has one of the most endearing, lovable characters we've ever seen in a car. Over three days, this big, thirsty, ridiculous Bentley had done exactly what classic cars are meant to. It made us smile. Just try not to think too much about the fuel bill. 